Celestial greetings. I'm Janet Booth, a professional astrologer from West Hartford, Connecticut, and welcome to my program on astrology called Looking Up. The topic for this episode is follow your rulers. And what I mean by rulers are the ruling planets, and we're going to talk about that. And this can apply to your sun sign, if that's the main sign you know about, which would be that sign from the time of year that you're born. You know, if you're born between March, basically around the 21st and around the 21st of April, that would be Aries and so on. Or even better, if you know your birth time and you've had your chart calculated, you would be looking for that sign which is rising in the east at the time of your birth. And that would be seen on the chart wheel at the nine o'clock position of looking at a clock face, so in the middle of the left. And your rising sign is really the way you greet the world. It's kind of how you dawn into life. But that first house that it starts is the real place of the personality and your individual life circumstances, things about your health, your body, your appearance. And that planet that rules the sign that's rising is said to rule your whole chart. So that would be the most important ruler for you to know. But first, let's just take a look at, and we'll bring up an illustration, what different planets rule what signs. Now, the sun and the moon are not technically planets, and we call them the luminaries or the lights in astrology. And each of them rules just one sign. And then there would be the other five planets that are visible to the naked eye that, you know, going back many millennia, astrologers and people knew about. And each of those planets were assigned two signs. So when you've got 12 signs, you've got two times five is 10, plus the two ruled by the sun and moon. And that would make your 12. Now, once modern days came along and we had our telescopes and we discovered the other planets, we gave rulership over the signs. Three signs got the modern rulers. And that's where we see in this list that there'll be the traditional ruler. That was the planet that ruled a sign before we discovered the new planet. And then the modern rulers are what we discovered with the telescope. So Mercury is still said to rule two signs, Gemini and Virgo. And it may be that someday we'll give one of those away to perhaps like a dwarf planet series is a candidate for Virgo. Venus also rules two signs currently, Taurus and Libra. Mars rules Aries, and it was the ruler of Scorpio, and some people, some astrologers, will still follow Mars for the sign of Scorpio. Jupiter rules Sagittarius, and before the discovery of Neptune, it was the traditional ruler of Pisces. And Saturn rules Capricorn and was the traditional ruler of Aquarius, now assigned to Uranus. And Pluto is now the modern ruler of Scorpio. So if you have your chart and you look at that rising sign, find which ruler is we're talking about. And that will probably have more relevance for you in this discussion than the ruler of your sun sign. But that's okay. Sun sign is very strong, and your ruling planet of your sun sign is also interesting to take a look at. So I started using this approach to astrology several years ago, and I've done a number of lectures and workshops on this topic. And today we're just barely going to scratch the surface because it's a bigger topic than what we can cover in a quick little half hour. And some of these techniques that I'm going to be mentioning, I'll just describe what they are in a sort of definition way. These are the kinds of things that if you studied a lot of astrology, you might look into, or if you wanted a special reading about your ruling planets, these are the kinds of things an astrologer would look at. So if you're a Cancer and the moon is your ruling planet or Cancer sun sign, Cancer rising sign, we're going to be looking at some of the longer term factors with the moon because on a day-to-day -day basis or what we call the transits the planets in motion kind of like the transit service think about the buses are always in motion the moon goes through a sign in two and a half days well you know you'd, your head would spin if you tried to follow that every minute but it might also say if the moon is your ruling planet that you do want to try to track those 
ongoing moon signs and you might find that gee when the moon is in a masculine sign I feel like I have more energy and I feel more withdrawn or just quiet and need my personal time when the moon's in a feminine sign it might work that way for you now in several of these or maybe in all of these examples I talk about something called progressions and this is a symbolic way of bringing your chart forward in time based on what was going on in the days and weeks following your birth in the year that you were born so it's almost as if seeds were planted in those first few weeks of your life that roll out later into the years of your life each day after your birth represents a consecutive year in your life so in those days and weeks that followed your birth there were new moons and full moons as are always going on about every 29 to 30 days apart we have a new moon so with that you have in your progressions your own personal almost 30 year long moon cycles and when it starts for you somewhere between age 0 and 30 is determined by how far into a moon cycle you're born so what was the phase of the moon just to give a quick example if you're born near a full moon that's about 14 days have elapsed out of the 29 to 30 so about 15 days later is the next new moon roughly and so at around age 15 and then plus 30 from there on in so at about 15 and 30 would be 45 75 if you live long enough 105 you'd have your own personal moon cycles so you would look at those and you know see what degrees were those new moons and full moons at do they hit something in your chart then once a month the moon comes back to that sign where it was when you were born called a lunar return and we can stop the action of the moving planets at that moment and see what does that lunar return say for you for the month likewise in one of those uh, I was going to say the 29 to 30 year cycles which is true those personal moon cycles but when we don't bring in the idea that the moon is going a few days more to catch up with the Sun for the next new moon we just say the moon itself goes around your chart by progression in 27 years so once every 27 years you have a lunar return by progression that's also a pretty important phenomenon and nice to look at then there's that idea of what I call moon grooves which you've heard me talk about I think before here on looking up it's something that I kind of gave a name to a phenomenon that probably other astrologers have noticed but for six months out of each year the degree where the moon happens the new moon or the full moon happens that degree repeats from sign to sign and then for six months it slips back about a degree and a half each month so you might be born in the midst of one of those grooves they always take place from fall to spring and if so the degree of those new moons that you were born into or full moon cycles they might hit a particular planet in your chart and that would be important or you might see sometimes certain years the degree that repeats will be the degree of your moon that's going to be very important six month cycle then we also like to look at before you were born what was that new moon that you were born into the cycle of and also what was the eclipse new moon that happened before you were born and these are um, sort of sensitive degrees in your charts that respond to movements of the planets around that cycle by transit there's also the thing called the nodes of the moon and that's the intersection and we've talked about this too of earth going around the sun and while the earth's going around the sun the moon's going around the earth and their orbits are at a slight angle to one another so that the moon goes above the earth sun orbit for part of the month and then below so the intersection points are those nodes and they have a lot to do with connections that we make with other people who are key in our sort of spiritual or karmic development and they are also um, kind of points that show what we came here to develop so those are things we would pay attention to because they're called the moon's nodes for if moon is your ruler now I placed mercury second in this list because usually it's working at a faster pace than the Sun so I kind of created the list in the order of speed and hmm, maybe Venus should have gone before the Sun they're about close but at any rate 
we have Mercury next, and Mercury, its nickname is Quicksilver because it goes fast. It goes around the sun three times for every time the Earth goes around the sun once. And therefore, each time it passes between Earth and the Sun, we have that optical illusion called retrograde, where it seems to go in the reverse direction of what it usually does. So when you have Mercury as your ruling planet, you're going to pay a special attention to all of those roughly three per year Mercury retrogrades. What degree range do they occur in? What are they accessing or activating in your natal chart? We would also say that if we looked across a lifetime of those Mercury retrogrades, well, no, a little different. Mercury can return to its natal position, and it might do that, say, probably about once a year. And if we would, and ran a list of those across the lifetime, we would find that sometimes those are happening during a Mercury retrograde. So you actually have a triple or a trio of Mercury returns, with the middle one being the retrograde. And that can be true with any of the returns of any of the planets. Uh, but, you know, for Mercury, it would be interesting because you might see there's certain years in your life where, oh, here was my triple Mercury return. And I remember that was the year I got this great idea for an invention. Or that was the year that, you know, when I was growing up, we changed schools because Mercury has to do with education, things like that. We also look in those days after your birth at that progression to see if Mercury goes retrograde then. It might have been forward at your birth and goes reverse for about 20 years in your life. That's important. Or we might also see that it changes the sign or the house in your chart by progression. And because it's quick, it might do that two, three, four, five times in a lifetime. Okay. Now the sun will never go backwards. And if it's your ruling planet, of course, we like to look at that birthday chart, the return of the sun to its birth position called the solar return. And there's a certain technique that a colleague of mine, Dietrich Pessen, from up in Boston, noticed and developed. Um, where she says, if you just calculate that solar return chart for the birthplace and watch the sign at the top of the chart called the midheaven, that sign will be for about nine years in one of the three modes or called qualities, cardinal, fixed, or mutable. That's one of the ways that we divide the signs. And it stays in that mode, like I said, about nine, ten years or so, and then it shifts to the next lower mode. And that's what she calls your change years. There's also sometimes, it's almost like a retrograde. It comes back to the prior mode for one year and then shifts into the new mode for nine to 10 years. And she calls that the bounce year. So you might be looking to see, is there once or maybe twice in a lifetime that you're gonna have one of these bounce years and you really feel like you're bouncing around. So that's very interesting. Solar eclipses might be especially important for you if the sun is your ruler, and especially if those eclipses happen in your sun sign. So if you're a Leo, we're having an eclipse in Leo this summer, August 11th. It'll be at 18 degrees and 42 minutes of Leo, and that might be important in your chart. Even um, solar eclipses that aren't in your sign, but that hit right within a degree or two of a planet in your chart, that's very important. Now, the sun will change signs about every 30 years, like clockwork, in your progressions. So depending on how far into a sun sign you were born, you know, if you're born on the fourth day into the sun sign, it's not going to be until 26 years old that your first sign change comes. And then 30 years after that, at 56. And then 30 years after that, if you live long enough, at 86. So. Those years when the sun changes sign by progression, giant. Big shift in how you look at things, what you're interested in, what your motivations are, maybe your sense of purpose. So that's something you would like to know if the sun is your ruler. Likewise, these 12 slices of the pie called the houses of the chart that are like the different departments in our lives, the sun will change those two, three, four times in a lifetime, depending on how long you live. So you're going to look for those two. And they're not necessarily anywhere near the years that the sign changes. It depends on, you know, if, if you have a house that starts at 
zero degrees, then yes, those are going to be very close in time. There's also another way of bringing your chart forward in time where we just say however far the sun has moved in the progression, which is basically about a degree for each year of age, we just kind of twist the whole chart forward for that amount. It's called the solar arc, like the sun's angle. And it's a nice way to watch the planets marching around your chart and see them kind of click off times when they hit your natal positions, and those are important factors. And even at certain ages, you know, when you're 45, all of the planets of your chart are at 45 degrees, that thing called semi-square, which is kind of a friction push to their natal position. So that can be sort of a difficult year for anybody, even if the sun's not your ruling planet. So Venus, if that's the ruler of your sun sign or your rising sign, you have a Venus return about every, I think, year and a half or something like that. Mm, maybe less, maybe less. I'm sure it's less because it's between Sun and Earth. But what happens is, it's in an interval of eight years, Venus is back at that starting position, just minus two degrees, but it's in the neighborhood. So that ages that are multiples of eight, like eight, 16, 24, 32, 40, 48, 56, those are key ages and years for you if Venus is your ruler. And you especially want to look at those solar returns, your birthday chart for those ages, and maybe even a, a Venus return at those ages. Uh, similarly, like we looked with the Mercury, we would look across a lifetime of your Venus returns and see if any of them happen with Venus retrograde, and you'd have that triple. Now, there's only certain signs that Venus goes retrograde in, and those shift over time, but very slowly. So if you do happen to have a retrograde Venus return in a triple, you'll probably have multiple of those, or let's say you could. You might just have one because you might be on the sort of edge of the range of where it's happening, either when it's starting later in your life or it's ending, it would be earlier in your life. But if you're right in the mid-range of where those Venus retrogrades always happen with your natal Venus, you're going to get those over and over every eight years. And those are going to be really key years in your life. So uh, we didn't mention this on the slide that I put up, but of course Venus will change house and sign by progression fairly regularly or fairly frequently in a lifetime, two, three, four times. Now, Mars is outside of the Earth orbit. It has a two-year orbit in Earth years. Likewise, we would look for the trio returns with the retrograde Mars, and that may not happen in a lifetime. But if it does, it's a big deal for that year. Usually, it will change sign or house by progression about two times in a lifetime. And I didn't write this here, but I do recall that at about age 15, there's going to be a Mars return close to your birthday solar return, also at age 47. So I call those kind of like Mars years, and your Mars energy might be stronger at a time like that, or maybe it's time for something new to come into your life. Mars is associated with newness frequently, and it's initiative, and it's get up and go, and it's do it your own self, and do it your own way. Okay, so those are the quicker moving heavenly bodies that we're likely to see sign changes, house changes. And though I didn't mention it with Venus or Mars, I did with Mercury, there could be progressions that are retrograde. Or say you're born with a Mars retrograde and at some point it stops and it goes direct in your progressions. And that's a really big change when your ruling planet shifts direction by progression in those days and weeks after your birth, that is a big time for you. And that is probably even more important with the slower planets. So we have a, another page that lists the slow planets. And the quickest of the slow planets is Jupiter. It has just under a 12-year orbit. So you're going to have a Jupiter return at about age 12, or just before you turn 12, just before you turn 24, somewhere between 35 and 36 somewhere around 47, somewhere around 59, uh, then somewhere around 71, and so forth. So those are very big. And we can even look at 
the phases with these slower moving planets. So that means when it becomes 90 degrees from its starting position or one quarter of the way around the circle or 180 degrees halfway around the circle or 270, which is 90 from the other direction, but three quarters of the way around the circle or if it returns. So those Jupiter return dates or ages I just told you, but about every three years, you're gonna hit one of those quarter points with your Jupiter transits. And you would also be looking to see, by progression, it probably won't change sign unless it's near the end of a sign, might not change house, but by transits, it's frequently changing the houses and the signs and even the quarters of the chart circle are called the quadrants. Okay, so Saturn's orbit is about 29 years and your Saturn returns at age 29, 58, and 87 are very important. That's probably the most important thing, but the quarters happen in about seven to eight year increments and those can also be very important times for you when Saturn is your ruling planet. So we're gonna look for those quarter phases you can look for your Saturn returns and see if any of them are a trio with the retrograde, which it can happen, but Saturn, there'll be gaps in the zodiac uh, between its retrograde ranges, whereas the other outer planets, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto, you will always have a trio with the return. But Well, you'll never get a Pluto return or a Neptune return because they are way too slow. Okay. So with Saturn, we also like to look for those direction changes by progression, and it's slow enough that the transits take about seven years to a sign or a house. No, that's not true. About two and a half years to a house and a, a sign about three years, yeah. So you wanna watch as Saturn moves around your chart and what is it wanting you to bring more responsibility to or more effort or set your boundaries. Now when we get to Uranus, Uranus has an 84 year circuit around the whole zodiac or orbit around the sun. So it spends about seven years in each sign or house. And that will be very important to track by the transits. Also you'll be looking for its quarter phases. So age 21, very interesting age because your progressed moon cycle will be about three quarters of the way. Well, it will have gone to a square from where it started in your birth. Let's just say that. And Saturn by transit will be at mm, three quarters of its cycle. That's right. And Uranus will be at one quarter of its cycle. Now Uranus has a very kind of jarring and crazy energy to it. So it's transits are much more easy to notice the effects of than say Neptune which is much more subtle energy and likes to kind of hide and conceal things. So we're going to look with Uranus for some crazy stuff to come up about every 21 years and that halfway point around age 42 is generally a sort of wake-up call that your youth is over and you're into your mid-years and it's time to really get on with what your unique path is if you haven't been following that or if you haven't pursued it enough to your satisfaction. And by the transits, we're going to see the quadrants change about every 21 years. Um, not exactly at that age because it depends on how far into the quadrant it starts. Okay, if there's a progression change of direction from reverse to forward or vice versa, that can be very key. Like Uranus is not even one of my ruling planets, but it rules astrology. It's in my career house. I had an interest in astrology, but I didn't really start pursuing it seriously until it changed direction by progression in my chart. Of course, I didn't know that at the time. That just, you know, happened. This is my life, and oh, here's astrology. Later, when I learned, I saw, whoa, look at that. Didn't pay too much attention about how since it was going backwards, there was going to be a year when it hit to the place where it started. And in that case, that was the year when I quit my day job of being an administrative assistant and went full-time with my astrology, and that was not planned. I wasn't paying attention to that. It was just kind of like, whoa. 
Um, well, I got upset with my boss and I said, this is it, that's that, and I'll do my thing. So doing your own thing, it's a very Uranian thing, and oftentimes Uranus stuff, it, like I said, sneaks up on you or con con kind of comes out of the blue. Neptune, on the other hand, rules fog and the veil, and it sort of hides itself from us. So we may not really even realize we're in the midst of a Neptune transit until, until we start wondering, gee, why do I seem to be kind of either depressed or just sluggish, or I'm sleeping a lot, or I'm withdrawn and I don't want to be around a lot of people? You need your space. You need to be kind of in your own um, little cloud, we might say. So with Neptune, it takes 165 years to go around the zodiac. So you're not going to have a Neptune return. But the quarter point, which can come up somewhere from, usually it's 40-ish or a little later, it varies, but um, that is a very key part of your sort of midlife transition. You know, in those 40s, we get Uranus, opposite Uranus, Neptune square Neptune, Saturn square itself. It can be very tricky. Okay, so um, we're going to look again for changes in direction in the progressions. We're going to track Neptune around the, the chart, and it spends usually close to about 12 years or so in a particular sign, and usually about that in a particular house. And what else is important to look for that? Mm -hmm. With anything, always check if there's a lunar or a solar eclipse on that planet. When your ruling planets hit, whoosh, whoosh. so we're coming into the home stretch now with Pluto, and that midlife square for Pluto. If you're older, if you're in your 60s, it probably happened when you were in your 40s. But if you're younger, Pluto's going quicker through the signs that it's in. At this point in time, it has kind of an egg-shaped orbit, so it's in the skinnier end of the egg. And people are having Pluto square Pluto at 38. It kind of means throw out everything that isn't working in your life and start over or kind of purge. And it's a transformational planet, a death and rebirth kind of planet. So here we're going to track as it transits through the houses. When does it change quadrant? Very important. It's the rule, ruler of the underworld, so it might come up above the horizon in your progressions or in your transits for sure. And when does it change quadrants? And mm, what else? That's probably the big things for Pluto. So you can see that there's always a lot of stuff you want to look at to follow your rulers. And um, like I mentioned, you won't ever have a direction change by progression for the sun or the moon, but you could for anything else. So any of the sign house changes, direction changes, returns, 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 all very exciting. So hopefully you'll want to identify your ruler, do some studying, or get a reading about your ruler, because there's always so much to learn about ourselves when we're looking at them.